hello friends and welcome so today we are going to start with virology okay so in few days or two three weeks next i will be uploading another videos for virology right so this is the first part in which we will cover introduction to virology okay so let's start so first is history of viruses okay so there are many events but i had just highlighted important ones so how viruses were discovered so in 1892 on first evidence of something after getting filtered okay a say sample or a sap of a plant when of a infected plant when it is filtered still the filtrate is able to infect the new plant okay so we all know that filters which has small pores they retain bacteria okay but not viruses okay so that was the evidence which uh, highlighted that there are some particles which are still getting passed through those small pores okay and which are infectious right so in 1892 dimitri avanovsky he did this experiment and he found out that there are some particles which are getting passed through these filters then martinez byring he called that filtered substance infectious substance as a virus and in 1917 uh, english bacteriologist that is frederick ward he discovered bacteriophages okay so this is in short about history of viruses then moving towards our main topic that is virology it means study of viruses okay so how virus is distinguished with or it is distinguished from bacteria or other microbes so the distinguishing features of these viruses they are like they have simple organization okay means very simple structure and only what is important that part you will just found that particular part or organelle we can say like in bacteria we call it as organelle so here we can also call it as organelle or part in the virus structure okay so they have characteristic mode of replication they are smaller than bacteria and they contain no cytoplasm or cellular organelles right so just a envelope okay a coating to their nucleic acids then something uh, called as spikes okay so these are some parts of their structures right so we will study these further so there are some terms that you may get confused okay so better to understand those first so virions is nothing but virus okay the complete infective form of a virus outside a host with a core of rna and a capsid is known as virion okay then there are two virus related other structures like viroids and prions okay don't get confused between viroids and virions okay so viroids are smaller than viruses okay still smaller than viruses and are only known to infect plants okay so when you will study plant virology you will deal with viroids next is prions so they are chronic they are progressive and always fatal infections or fatal infections of the nervous systems you will found those are caused by prions okay so they are known to infect both animals and humans and infectious agent is only protein okay without presence of any nucleic acid so this is the difference between vir virus or virion and prion so in virions you will see that there is nucleic acid but in case of prions there is no nucleic acid okay okay so before studying the structure of virus okay let's go through properties of viruses right so we know that they are intracellular parasites right because we are now dealing with coronavirus pandemic so most of you are now familiar with what are the properties of a virus okay so first is they are obligate intracellular parasite of say bacteria protozoa fungi algae plant and animal 
okay so they required a host for their growth next is ultrascopic size okay so they are very small and the size it ranges from 20 nanometer up to 450 nanometers in diameter okay so viruses are not cells but their structure is very compact and economical okay so as we uh, write as a bacterial cell okay you never write it for a viral cell okay you write it as virus okay you never mention a virus as a cell okay so the structure is very compact and economical so why it is economical that we will see further when we will study the structure okay so the virus do not independently fulfill the characteristics of life okay independently it is not independent it requires a host okay so that's why we see it as it is dependent on host for it characteristics of life okay so it will replicate it will express its genes inside a host okay and then you will see what that virus is or what that particular virus causes okay so they are inactive micromolecules outside the host cell right they are inactive outside the host cell but they are active only inside the host cells the basic structure consists of protein shell which is known as capsid which surrounds the nucleic acid core okay the nucleic acid can be either dna or rna but not both okay you will find the classification of viruses in my further videos where we will study that classification also depends on whether the virus contains dna as its nucleic acid or rna as its nucleic acid okay so nucleic acid can be double stranded dna single stranded dna single stranded rna or double stranded rna okay so even there are types depending on the single strand or double strand of the nucleic acid then molecules on virus surface impart high specificity for attachment to host cell okay so spikes are some small projections that you will find on the surface of virus okay so they are specific for the attachment to host host cell okay they help in attachment and penetration and further replication and growth of the virus so virus multiply by taking control of host cells genetic material and regulating the synthesis and assembly of new viruses okay they lack enzymes for most metabolic processes they lack machinery for synthesizing proteins okay so these are general properties of viruses you may get a question on this so try to write at least six to seven points okay yeah so now let's turn towards today's topic that is structure of a virus okay so you can see that you required a electron microscope to view or to have a visualization of virus okay so you can relate the sizes of cells and other components okay so it is given here in the diagram right so you can see that virus is smaller than a bacterial cell okay so we had studied that it ranges from 20 nanometer to 450 nanometer correct the size is in nanometers they are small infectious agents smallest of all are picorna and microviridae family of viruses okay and the largest means in case of size the largest uh, are pox family viruses okay they can be seen through electron microscope only okay so how in case of bacteria we do different kinds of staining to see different parts of bacteria okay say for capsule for endospore for flagella okay even to know whether the bacteria is gram negative or gram positive we do gram staining but in case of viruses it is different we do negative staining which outlines the shape or positive staining which shows the internal details okay and third is shadow casting technique right so this is regarding the staining techniques so you will not uh, asked you will not get a question on details of these staining techniques but remember these are 
the three types that are widely used for studying the virus under electron microscope okay so let's study the structure so only those parts are present in a virus which are essential to invade and control a host cell okay and that is why we studied in properties that the structure is very compact and economical okay so a virus it contains capsid envelope and nucleic acid okay so towards the right side you will see there is a diagram given so first you will see inside is a nucleic acid okay and then there is a outer core okay or there is a surrounding which covers the nucleic acid that is known as capsid which is composed of capsomers okay and then towards the outer side is envelope okay and there are some small projections which are known as spikes right so let's start with the capsids first okay so these are you can see here a blue color covering which covers the nucleic acid okay or the dna core okay why core because it is the very most important part and it is present in the center of a virus okay so capsid is simply it is a protein shell it consists of various sorry it consists of several oligomeric sub, uh, structural subunits okay and it is made up of protein called protomers right so the observable three dimensional morphological subunits which may or may not correspond to individual proteins they are called as capsomers okay so here there are two terms first is protomer and second is capsomer okay so protomers are subunits of capsomers and while capsomers are subunits of capsid okay so this is how you can remember both protomers and capsomers they can self assemble okay capsomers are arranged in a precise and highly repetitive pattern right that's why you see you can see here you can see the structure of each capsomer is same right which represents or which uh, develops or which builds the capsid right and that is around a nucleic acid the capsid encloses the genetic material of virus right it encloses the genetic material of virus then capsids can have several shapes from polyhedral rod to complex okay then the function is to protect the viral genetic material from damage okay so this is about capsid next is about envelope so many viruses that infect humans and other animals are enveloped okay so envelope is what it is present next to the capsid the outermost covering is envelope the foundation that that means it is made up of lipid membrane which acquired from the host cell during assembly okay so in case of lytic lysogenic cycle for bacteriophage i guess if you had done that before then you will get a idea about during assembly in host cell what does that mean right so i expect that you know that then the function of envelope is to protect genome from nucleases okay so nucleases are enzymes which attacks the nucleic acid okay from the environment and it facilitates its attachment penetration into the host cell okay so as there are some spikes present on envelope we had seen that in the previous slide they help in the attachment penetration into the host cell okay envelopes vary in size morphology complexity and composition okay so when you study example of a virus different examples of virus you will see that the size differs the morphology the complexity the structure of even envelope it differs okay so on all envelopes have a phospholipid bilayer right then the envelope glycoproteins are integral membrane proteins which are firmly embedded in the lipid bilayer by short membrane spanning domains okay so yeah you can see that here there are short membrane spanning domains between the bilayer and 
you can see the outer world that is exterior part is nothing but the spike okay and this is how the envelope it interacts with the capsid okay or it or or it helps to hold the structure compact okay the oligosaccharides are attached to the protein post translationally during the transport of cell membrane okay okay so these oligosaccharides they can form spikes or other structures on the outer side of the virion okay that is towards the outer side of the envelope so these can be used to attach to the host cell right so even that function we had seen in case of envelope that they had some projections like spikes which help in penetration and attachment to the host cell most of the viral glycoproteins are oligomeric okay then next you can see the second picture towards the bottom which shows that some of the vir virions or viruses they have envelope while some they lack envelopes okay so you can see the structural difference here now how the viral glycoproteins they interact with the capsid okay the envelope as we see, we saw that in previous slide that the envelope it has some glycoproteins embedded in the lipid bilayer okay so how those uh, glycoproteins they interact with the capsid so there are three ways first is the direct you can see that in the pictures or figures given below then second is via matrix protein okay so there is a layer of matrix protein okay which helps the capsid and envelope together okay then third is via multi protein layer okay so there is a multi protein layer there are three layers shown so these are internal proteins okay and that help to uh, interact the glycoprotein with the capsid okay and it helps to keep the structure compact right so this is also important point you can add this if you get a question in case of capsid and envelope okay how the interaction happens or what are the importance of having capsid and envelope in a viral structure then third is about nucleic acids okay so as we had seen that core may have dna or rna correct so the number of viral genes compared with the bacterial cells is quite small okay so only those genes are present which are required for the replication or growth of the virus inside host okay so the number of genes is comparatively smaller as compared to the bacterial cell so they only have genes necessary to invade host cell and redirect their activity the information encoded in viral genome those are replication of genome assembly and packaging of genome then regulation and kinetics of replication cycle okay how to regulate the replication cycle and fourth is modulation of host defenses okay so to have a successful replication inside host cell the virus also has to think about how to defend the immune response of host okay so that is also important so depending on all these four informations which are required for a viral uh, particle to replicate inside a host cell these all genes are very important okay so you can see here in picture a naked virus and envelope virus is shown okay so uh, envelope virus has a envelope extra layer or extra cover which is outside the capsid okay so what is nucleocapsid so nucleocapsid is composed of nucleic acid and a capsid okay that's why it is termed as nucleocapsid okay so towards the outside of nucleocapsid you will find envelope okay then next is about dna virus and rna virus okay so in case of dna virus you will find 
either single stranded dna double stranded dna inside the core and it can be linear or circular but in case of rna viruses most single stranded mostly they are single stranded then it can be a positive sense or negative sense okay so positive sense rna genome that are ready those genomes that are ready for immediate translation into proteins okay and in case of negative sense rna genomes have to be converted into the proper form to be made into proteins okay so this is the difference between positive sense rna and negative sense rna ambisense rna is single stranded rna viral genome okay and part of the nucleotide sequence is a positive sense and part of the uh, nucleotide sequence is a negative sense okay so both the uh, positive and negative sense of rnas are present okay that's why it is termed as ambisense rna okay example is rna viridi family okay so this was the structure of viruses introduction to virology in short okay so thank you for watching do like these videos share these videos with your friends and do subscribe to my channel okay till then bye bye